Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dean with Heather and Angie. This is the first time that we've been together. First time on LinkedIn Live and uh, other than a failed experiment this morning when I, I was messing around with some stuff. And uh, thankfully, everyone's here on time. Everyone showed up. And what we're going to be doing today is talking with Angie about how she built her own business's audience, why she built an audience. Does she have the right audience, does she think? What was a waste of money or time for her? Where does she focus? What does she think she's going to be doing next as she continues to build out sort of a durable, permanent, um, uh, recurring audience as she grows her business? Uh, like I said, I'm Dean and uh, I'm with Heather. Heather, why don't you introduce yourself, please? My name is Heather Coven, and I'm founder and CEO of Go Go Done, a virtual co-working space for accountability and um, for entrepreneurs pursuing financial independence. <clears throat> I'm really excited today to dig into this topic because as any good entrepreneur knows, you can't sell anything if you don't have somebody to sell to. So congratulations to anyone who's already here because you know that first step in business success is to have that audience. And a great way to learn about building audiences is to learn from others. And that brings me to Angie Flynn McKeever, who is going to be an amazing guest today. She's the founder and president of Ignite CSP. CSP stands for Coaching, Speaking, and Presenting. Her coaching sweet spot is leaders who are looking for a path to the next level. So I know you guys are out there listening. Uh, Angie has designed and facilitated leadership training workshops. She's coached leaders and taught workshops all over the country and internationally. Uh, she comes to the, this work from a lifetime spent in theater, acting, directing, and producing. So when it comes to public speaking, she knows her business. Uh, but let's dive into running that business um, and, and what that looks like in terms of building the audience. Dean, I think you have our first question for Angie. Yes, we got some questions ahead of time. It's going to be pretty great. And um, <laughs> Angie, I think the most popular one is when did you start to deliberately build an audience? Like when did you decide my business is the kind of business that's going to need an ongoing, ever growing audience? I love this question because it really makes me think back over the years of, uh, of failed experiments, of not building an audience, of uh, sort of those, those stagnant, oh, I keep going back to the same well uh, kind of moments. And I would say I first really started deliberately building the audience for this business in, where are we now, 2022, maybe 2016. <laughs> oh um, which was, was was pretty far into. I've been doing this work since since two thousand seven, so it's, so it was a long time of uh, sort of hit or miss, pretty ad hoc uh, uh, work. So in about twenty sixteen was when I started blogging regularly, when I started uh, experimenting with social media, when I started to really focus on building the relationships that have led to the audience that I have now. All right. I told Heather I'd give her the second one, but I'm only going to give her oh. seconds and then I'm going to jump in. <laughs> I will take the second one. So in that journey, this is this is the big one. Uh, what was a waste of time or money? What should we just like walk away from or was something for you worth walking away from and saying, no, never again? Yeah, uh, I really fell for the shiny... Um, Oh, what's going to happen if I run these ads? And what's going to happen if I if I am one of these coaches who posts all the time on Instagram? And what's going to happen if I, uh, you know, everybody is, can make a hundred thousand dollars with their coaching business on Instagram? And I, that just was a real waste of of energy and resources for me. The type of work that I do that's not really where my audience my audience is there, but they're not buying there. Um, so that was that was a a real um, <laughs> a real boondoggle <laughs> for me. Oh. Yeah. So how did you find out that they, they were there, but not buying there? What were your indicators for that? Well, because I, I asked, I asked people, I asked existing clients and they were really responsive and, and happy to share like, Oh yeah, I see your stuff. It wouldn't occur to me to share that uh, with my other friends who are, who are like me in this work. Um, they're just not, that just wasn't the mindset that they were in when they were flicking through their phones. Right. So that I, I was able to say, okay, well, I'm just gonna stop doing that. That's a, a, a great, uh, some great feedback that helped me uh, save those efforts for other places. 
And did you just ask them directly? Did you do like customer survey? Was it part of your? No, I asked them directly. I said, you know, I'm, I'm really looking to ha- how should I be building out my business? Where can I find more people like you? You're awesome. I love working with you. Yeah. And, you know, is, how about this? How about this? And they were like, yeah, not not Instagram. I'm there. I'm, I'm scrolling through it while I'm waking, waiting to pick my kids up in the carpool line. But I'm, it's not when I'm thinking about um, hiring a coach. So do you think at this point, I'm not going to ask how large your audience is because size is uh, very specific to individual businesses. Do you think you have at this point the right size audience or the right audience and the the right people in it? And if not, what do you think are going to be your next steps now that you've seen some things that don't work and you sort of figured out where your audience is when they're in the context and mind frame of, you know, this is where we're going to, uh, this is where it would make sense for me to see Angie and think about her in that context. I think I definitely have the right people in my audience. I feel great about the people that I'm reaching both through my blog and on my LinkedIn posts and just in the relationships that I have in the field and in in various industries. That that feels like I've I've never been more dialed in than I am now in that place, partly through to working honestly through Heather's um, Go Go Done. I mean, just no doubt that community has helped me a lot in that area. Um, I, I would say I can always find more of those great, perfect clients. I can always find more of those organizations that are looking to support their leaders through this kind of coaching. I, I, I am looking for continuing to expand that reach and, and sure. make those relationships for sure. Right. Right. So I think, you know, in some of our, our, pre-session discussion, we talked a little bit about, um, I think I, we talked a little about where your, your purpose on LinkedIn specifically, and you use LinkedIn a little bit differently. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I, I really use LinkedIn not to sell work. I mean, I have done that a little bit to no avail at all. Again, it was very much, um, I just people were not biting. It was either the way, I don't know. I, I have not done the slicing and dicing to figure out why. Um, but the things that have really worked are getting into conversations with people on, on interesting posts, theirs or mine and, and really building out those relationships there, even though I've never met these people, I've never met either of you in person, but I, those contacts are real. Those connections are real. And so I really like to get as deep as I can in that to, to figure out where I can be providing value to people where what my company does could potentially be of value and where I can be learning all the time from, Oh, this person does this this way, or, Oh, this, this person isn't in my field at all. But um, Peter, who we work with a lot in our group, Heather is not in my space at all, but his idea around designing and, and, and products and customer interaction is always really helpful to me in thinking about how I position my own work. Right. And that's Peter Nakamura. If you want to find him on LinkedIn, awesome. he's awesome. awesome. About him. awesome. He's wonderful. Will you say a little bit more about what you mean when you say build out a relationship on LinkedIn? Because I get so many connections that immediately sell me something and I just am like block done. Yeah, there's a lot of you, have, you haven't even looked at my profile. Yeah. So yeah, what does it I look want... like to connect over LinkedIn for you? Yes. Um, I think for me, it's much less about messaging people unless I have a really solid, oh, we went to the same school, we're in the same field, we have several mutual acquaintances, that to me is a, you know, and they're doing something that I find, oh, could be a a really interesting compliment to our work or something like that. That would be a reason for me to message somebody, a, a personal message to say, you know, I would love to be in communication with you. So that's one way of doing that. And then another is just to have a really structured and um, kind of uh, uh, deliberate approach to interacting with people on LinkedIn of if somebody is posting a lot that tells me they're spending time on LinkedIn and they, they're inviting those relationships there. They want to be deepening relationships on LinkedIn. So how can I do that? How, again, how can I be bringing value and what can I do to, to elevate what they're doing um, without really having my own needs at the forefront of that? So you sort of like settled in a bit to the uh, LinkedIn ecosystem, I guess. If you had to start all over from scratch, like you just lost your corporate job last week and someone says, Angie, you don't need that kind of arrangement. You could totally do this on your own. 
you can find, you know, your people. Uh, would you start on LinkedIn again or is there something else you would do? Oh, gosh. Yeah. What's the disaster scenario in case like LinkedIn went away? <laughs> um, you know, I have a couple of uh, of colleagues and friends who have been looking at how to take their audience building efforts completely out of any platform that they don't own or run. Right. Yeah. Uh, which makes sense to me for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And, and I've been kind of vaguely following that, but I, I think, you know, that I already have relationships. Um, and there is, I do, I have a, a newsletter, a blog that um, is probably where I would go. And, and that's, that is about learning who, who is already in my non-LinkedIn ecosystem. Although of course there's a lot of overlap that is interested in what I want to do, that uh, that is connected to me and to others. So who are those vectors of influence and uh, relationship? And, and how can I, how can I get into conversation with those folks and see where that may lead? I, I, I think just to say something really obvious, this all takes yeah. a really long time. Yeah. Right. There is a, there is a, if you're really going to make a relationship, I mean, think about the people in your life that you have relationships with. It's not, you didn't ha say one thing to them, passing them in the hall. And now all of a sudden you've got this full blown relationship and you can ask them for anything and they're going to, you know, buy your services worth thousands of dollars. You have to nurture that and create that over time. Right. And, and that's as true, maybe more true in the virtual space than it is in real life. So for me, it's important to remember that, that just because I liked somebody's comment or was like, hey, this is really cool and blah, 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 you know, clever comment. It's going to take a long time to build a relationship. They have to, we have to figure out if we trust each other, we have to figure out what we value in each other. Um, which is, a, I realize I, I really departed from the answer to your question, no, but I fun. think it's all about developing those relationships. So I just want to make sure I understand you. You're saying there is no just add water instant path to this. Because if there is, I want to know about it. I have not found it myself. That's for sure. Whatever. <laughs> <This is a laughs> so bust. sorry. So sorry. <laughs> is this not the get rich quick webinar? It was promised. Oh. <laughs> Man. We made no such promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell that to the lawyers. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so when you look at, at that audience and building that audience relationship, how much time would you spend and what kinds of activities? So the outreach on social media, you've outlined that a little bit on the LinkedIn. What What's kind of the bigger picture when it comes to nurturing that audience? Are you talking about the social media audience in particular or my audience as a whole? How about start with your social media audience um, and then yeah. transition that in kind of down your funnel? <clears throat> the, my only social media audience is on LinkedIn. I am not doing... A any other platform at this point. So there's there's LinkedIn and there's my blog. And that's that's really the two places that I have decided to put my, my energy and my resources. I spend probably, oh, I don't know, three hours total on LinkedIn, probably three hours creating my blog posts. And this isn't enough, it's enough for the blog posts. It's probably too much for the blog posts. Um, but for LinkedIn, I mean, the, the thing that is next for me to get back to something you asked a little while ago, Dean, the thing that is next for me is really deliberately investing that time in figuring out who do I want to be connected with? Who am I already connected with that I can spend more time figuring out what their needs are and, and how I might be helpful? Where is that uh, fertile space in LinkedIn that I can I can really carve out you know, 30 minutes, four times a, a week or something like that, that would, that would feel good to me to, to really be investing that time there. And I'm not doing that yet. Do you mean like finding po folks who fit sort of a, a certain profile or have certain attributes or backgrounds and then proactively connecting with them on LinkedIn? I mean, looking for starting with people I'm already connected with right. and, doing some sorting and saying, okay, well, these people are in these fields where I do a lot of work, or these people are uh, in, in roles that are parallel to mine. So they're doing similar work to mine, but they're not in exactly the same space. 
and right. looking at their and look and maybe filtering too for how much are they posting on LinkedIn? Did they join right. in 2018 and have like, you know, it's three jobs ago, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. So figuring out those things and then really coming up with this core of people who I'm interacting with a lot, who I, I, I'm really elevating my own um really putting my resources into, into interacting with those people. Okay. So let me see if I, I, I got this right. There are like, you know, any number of ways to sort of build the top end of a funnel that ultimately ends up in a client, right? Um, social media advertising didn't work out very well for you, right? Or other right. social media platforms as well. So that's out. So advertising's out. Um, sort of outbound prospecting, not really that kind of business, um, content marketing, like the blog posts and stuff, like some from there. But in your case, if you're reaching out to sort of people in adjacent areas where you might have the same customers, but for different reasons, then that means you you have a referral based business, right? That's right. So you're building an audience. Your audience are people who will refer you to other clients. That's right. Okay. All right. That's right. And a lot of what I'm doing on LinkedIn is providing what I think of as thought leadership. So it's not um, necessarily, I'm gonna write three paragraphs about presentation skills, and now I'm gonna give you a hard sell to sign up with me as a coach or for one of my workshops. It's much more about after somebody has been referred to me and they go look me up on LinkedIn, what's there? What can they learn about me from what I've posted? Can they get an idea of, um, of what I'm about, of how my approach works, of how trustworthy I am in the space, so that so that there is um, there's some credentializing that I'm doing of myself there too. Okay, so that's 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 smart. I like that. So when when you're talking about like aligning with people and building relationships, those are not like even like short term kind of commercial relationships. Those are long term help each other out as business people who, you know, uh, can, uh, if not coordinate, at least like help and, and pass along and, and like recommend throughout years and years. Yes. So that yes. I'll give you an, yeah, yeah, I'll give you an example of that. Yes, I have please. a colleague, uh, whose podcast I was on, actually it's coming out tomorrow, uh, whose podcast I recorded a long time ago, but it's coming out tomorrow. And he, uh, he and I are connected on LinkedIn and a okay. bunch of other and, and in, uh, but we've never met in person. And so we only have this, you know, whatever we call this now, it's real life, but it's mediated through screens relationship. Yeah. And he got in touch with me a couple of weeks ago and said, he is working with a client that he's had a relationship for, with for a long time. He's doing a workshop for the, his sales force. And he wants the pre-read for this group to be the first three chapters of my book. So what I get on the phone with this client would I be willing to sell them my book? Yes, of course I would. Um, and <laughs> would I shoot a two minute video uh, giving them an idea of, of how they can apply the concepts in the book to the thing that they do. Right. So this relationship that I'm, you know, that started out as this pretty transactional and we're going to do this one thing together and see how it goes over the last year or so has really grown into, oh, I trust you. I know your work. I know the quality of what you do and we can refer people back, back and forth. Okay. All right. That's, that's an interesting model. It's probably, it takes longer to build, I imagine, but it's very durable. Well, that's the idea. And it's, and it's, it's very, it can be really frustrating. And that's why I, can, I, I still to this day can get enticed by the, you know, I'm going to, I'll build this funnel for you if you blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I'm going to 500% blah, blah, blah. Right. That can be like, oh, that just seems so easy. Um, but I, at least in my work, I have not found one of those models that delivers what it promises. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to talk a little bit about um, both your target market uh, for what you're selling and your target market on LinkedIn. I, I find a lot of people I work with are so they want to serve everyone. I mean, I continue to fall prey to that also. Uh, but I'd like to hear just a little bit about kind of your process of defining your target market of who you're selling to and how that trans or you know how that shift happened and how that helps you in knowing your target market, how that helps you find those um, 
those kind of shoulder industries and, and other partners on LinkedIn and make that distinction between those two? Sure. Um, I will say I got to start to learn this lesson really early, like two careers ago when I was the education director at the National Shakespeare Company in New York. And I would create these workshops for, um, for mostly middle and high schools. And my selling point at that time, and I was a very young professional at that time, my selling point was like, we can do anything for anybody. Mm. And I couldn't figure out why for busy school administrators and busy teachers, that was not like this wonderful open sesame of an invitation. And what I finally figured out after a little while was, no, I, I need to offer something that they can see. Oh, that's for me. This is that's clear. You made this for me. And not to say that uh, that I haven't also, like you, Heather, fallen into that. Oh, but this everybody could use this. Everybody, you know, I I, I do fall into that. But I, I try to remember that feeling of as a consumer when I look at something and go, oh my God, you made that for me. How special that feels, and how um, immediately I want to pull out whatever payment device I have at the ready to buy that thing. Oh my God, you really, you thought about me when you made this. So for me, my target market, and I was talking to Dean about this before we went live. I have one client who I worked with probably four or five years ago. She and I are still in touch. We um, have a, a really great relationship. And I, she is the person I think of as the, the avatar of my ideal client. She's smart. She's uh, results oriented. She's ambitious. And she is re she really wants to be as, as she wants to improve in all the ways that she can. And that's fun for me. That's a fun kind of client. Those, those clients are curious and they, they really want to bring their best self to the coaching. So I try to write my content uh, on LinkedIn for those people. Like I think about her and, um, she, it was funny, she actually forwarded me last night one of my blog posts from somebody in her team who had disseminated it back to her and some other people was like, this is, you know, and saying great things about the content. I thought this is how this works, right? And it does take a long time and it yeah. does take some sculpting of that idea. And, and I, frankly, a lot of, of hit or miss of, um, let me just widen the scope this time and see if we can serve these people. Oh crap, that didn't work the way I wished it would. Um, let's let's narrow it down again. Let's let's go back to that idea of how can I make somebody feel like I made this for you? I'm thinking about you when I create this. Yeah, oh, it's a powerful mm -hmm. message, and it gets through the the chatter that's out there constantly. For yeah, sure. right. yeah. Sure. And it can also hurt your feelings to like not be for everybody, yeah. you know, yeah. but that's okay. I mean, well, and especially early on when you feel like you're turning away business or you might miss business or, or something. Oh like my that. gosh. But that is such a powerful lesson to, to say, yeah. say yes to a thing that you realize afterwards you should have said no to. That's, yeah. that's a great learning experience. I've, yeah. I've had it more times than I care to count. And when you're first starting out in a business, like the first few customers you have, have a very outsized impact on how your business develops compared to anything else and getting so the wrong true. ones early can put you on a path. It's like, I don't even like what I do anymore. And I went into this because I wanted to do something that I like and really care about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. So um, kind of looking at somebody who's maybe just starting off on LinkedIn, I think the stats are like two to 3% of people who are on LinkedIn post. And I'm yep. sure that's, pretty similar in a business sense and some of the other platforms or who's posting for their business or for their, um, their freelance work, et cetera. So in terms of what's really worked for you, either, you know, not just in social media and LinkedIn, but if, if I was not somebody who posted on LinkedIn or was not doing any content marketing and I was going to step into that world, uh, are there a couple of like big things that maybe a couple of uh, really sweet pieces of advice that you'd give to, to that person? Yeah, two things come to mind for me. One is write in in the voice that your audience is looking for. And for me, that's very much almost uh, almost writing the way I talk. 
posts. I want people who read my posts to get a really clear understanding and feel for who I am and the kind of work that I do. So I would say try to stay away from bland, generic corporate speak that our eyes sort of just skitter right over as we're as we're scrolling through. And the other thing I would say to kind of come back to something that we've all hit on already is if you're going to build a relationship on LinkedIn or anywhere else, this is a, a two-way street. So you can't expect to post something, go about your day and gain any traction. You're going to need to uh, interact with the people who comment on your post if you're lucky enough to have that happen. And you're going to need to seek out other people, whether it's your followers, whether it's other people you want to be uh, connected with and, and contribute. You have to contribute to the platform in order for it to work for you. And be patient. Yeah, patient and diligent. It's going to take at least three weeks. Well, I know we only have a few minutes left, and I really want um, our audience to hear a little bit about your book, if you don't mind giving us a little bit of uh, a synopsis of what it is and how we can get our hands on it. (laughs) Angie has a book. (laughs) I do. I have a book. My book is called Before You Say Anything, How to Have Better Conversations, Love Public Speaking, and Finally Know What to Do with Your Hands. Uh, It came out in the fall, and it really is a synopsis of our coaching approach, our three-part coaching approach, which really starts with why are you talking? (laughs) What are you trying to make happen as a result of your communication? And that may sound really obvious, but uh, most of us don't ask that question. And that is in fact, what can get us into some trouble, particularly when communication or conversation gets into a high stakes sort of area. We're giving a, um, a presentation to a lot of people. We have to give difficult feedback. We're in an interview. Anything where we feel our hands get a little sweaty or our heart rate elevate a little bit. This is really when we want to get very, very clear about what we want to make happen when we're, when we're talking. So the book really uses a lot of stories, a lot of examples. It has uh, concrete takeaways at the end of each chapter so that you can try out the process for yourself. And it is available in paperback, e- ebook, and audiobook. And you read your own audiobook, do you? And know? I read my own audiobook. Really? The audiobook is doing really well. Um, I'm really You are about a it. speaker, an actor, a that presenter. Makes sense, I, guess, yeah. I went yeah. for the audiobook myself. I was like, oh, she read it. Well, ha- just listening <laughs> to the audiobook will be a lesson in itself. <laughs> Gosh, I hope so. It was really hard. It was harder than I thought it was going to be, but I enjoyed it a lot. I would never do that. I would never read. I do not have a voice that someone would want to listen to for seven hours. I could do it seven hours straight, but I could. I listen to you like crazy, Dean. Everything that that's a very good point. Mind, but you wouldn't speak for seven hours. You'd be like twenty minutes. I got everything I needed done. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> very succinct. I can I'm, speak for seven hours. I'm a crystallizing down to the basics kind of guy. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. So how do that's we get a, the that's book? a big value? How do, how do you get the how book? Do we contact Thank you. you? Well, you can go to my website, which is ignitecsp.com. There is a a book page on the website, which is the easiest way to find the links to all the various ways to get the book, um, as previously mentioned. And if you are an independent bookseller person, you can get it that way. And if you are a person who doesn't mind the uh, Space Marauder sending the book to your house, then you can get it there too. Fabulous. Fabulous. And, uh, and anyone who wants to get in contact with you, perhaps on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Please get in touch with me on LinkedIn. I'm always looking for more friends. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. So I've put a couple of links in the chat. One of course is to Angie's website. And one is to thisaudiencemusebusiness.com, which is not even a website, really. It's just a form so that if you want to make sure that you get a little notification or email, about the next thing we're going to be doing and whether it's for you, then uh, go ahead and fill that out. We will not be sending many emails out to people. It'll be very select. So just, you know, it's not like, oh my God, again with these guys, we we get that, right? We all get too much email, but we'll send out just enough so that it's useful to you without sort of distracting, I promise. And that's it. Look at that. We managed to come in at almost like perfect time. Awesome. Thank you both so much. This was a joy. I enjoyed it so much. This Huge was a thank lot you of to fun. you, Angie. Yeah, thanks right. for the generosity. Anyone, feel free to reach out to, to Angie on LinkedIn. You know, she, she's uh, yep. further down on the event page, actually. You can just click on her face and go for please. it. Please. Well worth it. <laughs> click on Angie's face, please.
All right. Thanks. See everybody. Bye. Bye.